I'm Brandon. And I'm Brandon. And welcome back to Apollo City Comics, your anything and everything podcast. Shit, I always fuck comic book oh, podcast. You there almost we go. God had it. it. I was it's, so close. It's, it's, spaced, Apollo, it's spaced out right at the The end. Apollo City Comics podcast, your everything and anything comic book podcast. That's how we start the show. We make sure you guys remember our slogan for us. Um, hi, dude, it's been, I feel like it's been a minute because we recorded a whole bunch and then we didn't. Yeah. And now it's like we're back at it. I was feeling and lonely for a while. I know. It's kind of odd, like even taking a Tuesday off. But hey, we're back. And you know what? We have flooded you guys with badass comics and a couple commentaries. And now it's time to bring some guests on, to have some engagement, to talk to someone else besides each other, because that's all we do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but as you pull up this amazing new episode of this fun, exciting interview about to happen, you should grab a cup of coffee that you probably got from Coffee and a Comic and go hit up our guy and, you know, make a pull list, help him out. He's a local business. You're actually, you know, helping a local business. And you know what? You get coffee in your orders along with bag and boarded books. And he has a bunch of cool stuff on his website right now. He's been updating it every week. And I know there's actually new stuff on there. Uh, I want to say that there's, you know, there's like a newish clearance section and a dollar bin section as well, which, you know what? My comic book shop doesn't even have a dollar bin section anymore. So go online and check out the dollar bin section and clearance. Dude, even newer books are on clearance, so it's totally worth it. And what about our friends over at Lesser Known, Brandon? Well, while you're supporting a local business and drinking their coffee, you could go support another publisher, Lesser Known Comics. They have, I want to say, a good selection now of like even more comics to choose from. And if you go to our episode description, as usual, you can find a discount code right there. And with that said, you could also keep an eye out for some of their Kickstarters coming up. They got a few. I know that they got a few planned. Uh, there's none right now, but they definitely got some they're going to be rolling out soon. So make sure to like follow their social media and stay up to date with them. Yeah, the, I think the Digital Lizards of Doom Kickstarter is coming up. So keep an eye on that's a badass book. Mm-hmm. I've seen the art. I can't, you know, I think there's going to be tiers to get the previous books. This is uh, level three. Yeah. So yeah, go check that stuff out. It's some it, a D lot is some fun stuff. I could see that going places. Yeah, but on to today's. Um, let's just get today started. I'm so excited. Yeah. We have Where are you going J C J B Christian John Brunner on the show, creator of all sorts, animator and cartoonist. Dude, there's no. It's hard to really define everything you do. Uh, Christian. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Welcome. It's exciting to talk to you guys and be on a podcast and all that. So it's fun to kick this off. Yeah, man. We um, you're part of actually. This is part of a series that we're gonna kind of have, and we're getting a lot of the, pe- mm-hmm. the team, the team, uh, the, the, team. Yeah, the, the band. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the team, <laughs> the people and team. <laughs> Sorry, caught me off guard. Uh, we're gonna have a bunch of the people of uh, lesser known on the show again. We're super excited because there's so much, there's so many. Yeah, it got um, big <laughs> around now. Yeah, it got big, yeah. and there's some some stuff has been announced. Some stuff we can't even talk about yet. But dude, um, how did that come about? How did you get involved with lesser known? Let's how did I get involved with lesser known? I think like early. So Mark, I think he got it going last year sometime in 2021, and the Instagram at the time only had like a few sketches and stuff. And he hit me up early on and we were just in contact and contact throughout the year. And I did like a variant that like didn't see the light of day, but that was like the start of our relationship. And then, uh, it's a good, it's a good way to start. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) And then, um, yo, check out this variant. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's somewhere in a hard drive. Um, (laughs) but, uh, and then we've just been keeping up and talking ever since and spitballing. But it, it seemed um, I was a little hesitant. Like, I'm very independent with my art and I was a little hesitant. But like Lesser Known's whole like pitch is for the artists and for the creators. So I was very like drawn to that. And I think that it is kind of like a it clicks well because it's more of just like people people talking. It's not really like a a big corporation or anything like that. Like we just kind of converse over zoom and everybody's all over the country. So that's kind of the fun part about lesser known is just kind of like all of like the interconnected part of it and how everybody's coming from all over and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a big boom of like independent books of 
like every style. Yeah, you definitely. know, it's hard to find that kind of variety at that point, and they're all very accessible. Um, they're all, you know, I'm part of all of their Kickstarters where you could get, you know, most of their backlog and everything too. So it has availability, and I think that's what drew us to them too. Was just like, damn, this is just up, uh, you know, uprising <clears throat> creators, and you're, I mean, you're perfect. I, you know, I'm looking at your career and what you've done. Um, we'll get to all of it, but you have, you know, cartoons up on YouTube. Um, you have a new book that you uh, were talking about us. I don't know if we could talk about it on the air yet, but, um, and then you have your own graphics that you've created before. So yeah. you've written, you've drawn, you've animated, um, you know, you were saying cartoonist fits you perfectly because you draw and you write and mm -hmm. you do all that. So it's like, you're, you're on that uprising, you know, you have your, your feet wet in every single corner mm -hmm. you can get it in. Um, what drew you towards that? What um, made you go it's that kind route? of funny, but I think like, um, like, you know, when you're, par when you're young, your parents, like, really try and, like, drive you to do things and things like that. And I, as a kid, I was homeschooled, and I always drew. And then when I went into school, they would still try and find, like, extracurriculars. Or, like, I, homes I, uh, I took, like, art classes in homeschooling. And then when I went into, like, uh, high school in a real public school, they, like, signed me up for airbrushing on the side. And they also signed me up for classes at the Kubert School. And if you know, like, comics, oh, like, oh. um, the Kubert School is, like, the school. And it just so happens that it's, like, 20 minutes from me. So it was just, like, a circumstantial thing that I kind of got into comics because it was just kind of, like, accessible in my area. Like, where it's not mm -hmm. for a lot of people, it's, like, like, I, like, uh, what's a, like, Greg Hildebrandt was someone that I showed my art to in high school. Like, you know, it, it, which was really, like, I found later on out, like, that's a big deal. But like at the time, I was just like, doo, 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 doo. but like um, it kind of like. That's why I feel like uh, some of that influence is there and some of that like uh, technique is because I, I actually did go to like that school for a little bit. And then in college, I went to uh, the Fashion Institute and that's when I made these books and kind of like we'll get into the story of the making of the books a little bit more in college because they were a little bit more like uh, at the same time. But the Cooper school is definitely like why i got into comics because it like uh like i i learned it there basically like i made my first two pages at the cubert school and it was like a night class i would do after high school my dad would take me and drop me off and then pick me up kind of thing it was fun oh damn that's cool yeah you know it's what's interesting is like the cubert school is one of those things that like i've never met a single person that's ever gone mm, there yeah it was almost like this mysterious Entity like the like kinda, to us over here. Yeah, you know I mean? it kind of looks country. like it too. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you saw you saw the ads for it in the books, and you're like, oh yeah, that's a thing. But like, does anybody actually go? I, to it? And then like you realize like when you do go there, it does teach mm -hmm. you a lot. And there's like, you know, it's very specific to comic books, so that's why it's extremely helpful. Yeah, it's in a part of New Jersey though. It's like not near the city or not near like anything. It's like an hour out of the city, so it's just kind of like that's why like nobody really goes to it because you'd have to like move to like a random part of the country almost like it's not like uh, like a very connected place so it's just kind of like circumstantial i feel like that it that it worked out for me did you um you know like when you see the ads and books it always lists like the names of all the people that have gone there that are like you know famous did you ever come across anybody um, there or I think like I, I went for, with just like a, a, a random guy at night, but I think the guy in the class next to me who was the teacher did like the Archie comics at the time. So it's like it was it was cool to know that kind of stuff. Um, but I think I wasn't there for like the regular day classes. The guy that taught my night class, he was like more of like he worked there as a student and stuff like that and worked up the ranks. So he did know, but he was not necessarily like one of the figures. I think. Uh, Never mind. That's like a different tangent. But I think, like, well, uh, I'll say it. But I think like all the Cuberts still kind of are in the area too, which I've thought about before. I'm like, like, um, I think my mom has ran into like Adam, like one of them, or at like the fair or something like that. And and I like catch wind of them every once in a while that they're around. Oh, nice. I mean, that must be cool. Just being like, yeah. I'm gonna hunt these guys down and either show them my art or get a sketch real mm -hmm. fast <laughs> and see what's up. Ask some questions. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just such a legendary thing, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Seti went there, Tolbin, I think Tolbin um, went there, you know, Ed Piscor and all those people, mm -hmm. like, it's, it's one of those things that, like, if you got to, 
you know, step foot in there, you're going to get some knowledge coming out of some sort. And I don't draw. I've always wanted mm-hmm. to draw. Um, but I've always been like, man, should I just try to like apply? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> just be like, that's going to force me to draw and shit. Um, dude, that's super cool. What an opportunity. Yeah, it was um, very circumstantial. Right. Just a golden <laughs> thing. What um, you were saying, like, it, it, what got you into the fashion school? Was it because of drawing? So, I've always kind of been, I've always put those together. The fashion school was kind of like, um, I was, when I left high school, I knew I wanted to make comics because I had, um, I had a philosophy kind of about, like, business. I liked the idea that, like, the guy that made The Walking Dead was the guy that sold The Walking Dead to AMC. Like, I didn't want to be, like... Like I heard that, um, you know, the Hawkeye series, the comic book looks yeah. a lot like the new TV show. And I think I saw somewhere on Twitter, like a guy was like, oh, they should credit these artists. And he was like, why don't they pay better? Like he like replied back like that. I could be misquoting. That's like something I briefly saw. But like as an example, like I feel like um, sometimes in business you get so allured by the big brands that you forget that like they kind of like sell you short a little bit as the creator so i think um oh crap i kind of forgot where i was going but you you kind of get what i was saying (laughs) yeah no 100 percent. we see that we talk about Mm -hmm. that a lot too you know honestly it's just we you know we follow comic book news pretty often in general to stay in the loop and you always see creators get screwed over and you're just going through twitter threads uh but yeah, well, who's the uh, artist on that, Brandon? It was. I haven't personally David. read the series, but I'm just very familiar. I've wanted to. For Walking Dead, isn't that Charlie? Oh, something? Robert Kirkman. Oh, but I was thinking. Oh, Robert. Oh, yeah, David Aja or something like that for Hawkeye. Oh, um, for yeah, Hawkeye. Right. Yeah. I thought That's, it's still... that he was quoting, and yeah, you're right. I remember seeing that news thing where he was just like, "Yeah, like, you know, they're you're pulling all my art, kind of, but I'm not getting much for it." When it's like, no, that was also um, Brew Baker. Oh, that's Brew who Baker, it was. Yeah. Brew Baker got like nothing for Captain America in the MCU. Like he was in theaters watching it, and he goes, "Huh, that's my story." Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. more. I remember him being very vocal too. I'm pretty sure Aha mm-hmm. was, but yeah. And you look at you know people. We were just talking about uh, in our Black Science episode, Rick Remender, how he was just like, "I just went into mainstream to get a bigger audience, and that way I just went back to my creator own because I just." Yeah. I had to reach out to that. Yeah, to tap to in, yeah. Graphic and then have them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, so what, What you know, growing up, I, you were saying that you, you didn't get into comics till like, high school, practically. Do you not read comics much when um, you did or, you know, superhero I'll say, or anything? So my superhero interest is more so on the cartooning side, which kind of fits in with what I do. Um, I kind of loved, I was a, like, I was born in 1998. So I was a little like, I'm younger than you guys, definitely. But at the time when I was a kid, it was like uh, the big things were like the Justice League Unlimited show. Like the, I was like, uh, like three when the first Spider-Man movie came out and two when the first X-Men movie came out. So I think like oh, comics became more like, franchisey almost when i was a kid if that makes sense like it was almost a little past comic books so i almost like because i drew i got back into comics sort of thing and that's kind of like um nice. off camera we mentioned it i said my age like my peers don't really read comics um and i think that that me being the artist one i sought it out but a lot of my peers still kind of don't if you know what i mean but like I went back and I read like the Batman stories, like the op- iconic ones, like I got them from the library, uh, Dark Knight Returns, the long Halloween kind of thing. I think like the first like comic I remember having as a kid, like on paperback was like Nightfall. Like I had the one where he got his back like sh- yeah, or yeah, yeah. shattered or it was like the one where he like uh, the John Paul character, whoever has like Bane's like shirt in his hand. And I also yeah. from the oh, yeah Azrael and everything yeah. yeah from the movie theater I also had like Spider Man being shot by Punisher because like the early Punish two thousands Punisher movies were coming out at the time so like comics were like I, I I was interested but it was like a disconnect like comic shops weren't really around as much but like comic media was like you would go to Walmart and mm-hmm. see like Superman shirts everywhere but like you wouldn't see a comic book kind of thing. Like it's it's changing. Like I've seen comic books in Walmart again, but like at, when I was growing up, not so much. 
Yeah, it's it's trippy how like uh comic book, well at least specifically su- the superhero comics have like been a generational generational thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you're saying for you, you were three when Spider Man came out. Like, and I'm revealing how old I am here, but I was like almost eleven mm-hmm. when that movie came out. And to me, and I'm pretty sure to Brandon, as far as like transcending comics uh spider-man was the 1994 animated series yeah 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 you know and it's trippy how it like it does that but also like it's interesting too like in other parts of the world like over in i'm, I'm assuming this is in the east coast right still <laughs> yeah i've been yeah, in jersey like my how, whole life basically except for college yeah how, like how walmart has like the superman shirts <laughs> but not the books and that's because like the the property of the character is worth more than the book itself. yeah yeah very true where in san francisco for me growing up you know, comic book stores were kind of not everywhere but there was at least six i could think mm-hmm. of off the top of my head and they all you know they were stocked and everything damn that's crazy like you know you know as a kid i remember like i'd still get picked on for liking comics like in elementary and middle school a little bit in high school too you know like it was still like not not like the end thing and i feel like any kid now is just like yeah yeah batman or whatever just, well, yeah. it's just like casual, this will be like, interesting like, for you guys anime. too but what's popular with my peer group is anime and like manga more so than comics they went to japan like maybe it was because like the storylines got too deep and we couldn't pick up like superman 400 and understand anything like or something like that like where you can get naruto number one and understand by the end what's happening you know um that's very true i feel like it was coming over like tv wise and tsunami yeah at yeah that point too it was more accessible and like um dragon ball z and all well, that you know? the internet helped that really like being able to like streamline getting like downloading episodes or streaming episodes or like oh, downloading yeah or something like and that. like rappers have made manga cool too like rappers are kind of rapping about manga and that kind of thing well i guess wu-tang and like mf doom rapped about comics but i mean like uh yeah, whatever. But uh, even, and like my cousin, who's uh, like was born in two thousand six, he now reads manga. Like I went over his house and I saw it. So it's it's interesting, and I I, I almost want to harken back as a creator, or like harken like bring that influence over from like Japan to America, kind of, because I see what they're doing with like Shonen Jump and how they run their stories, and it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, manga was a big. Uh, I just, I really tried getting into it a lot last year. I was never like a manga anime person, and you know I, I did like some basics. I did like Akira, and um, I did I forgot what else. I did a couple yeah. other books and everything. But I'm still like growing that library just because I was just like, yeah, I mean, this is big. This is what everyone's kind of like gravitating towards. I want to see. I want to find like the really good stuff, just like you would with a comic. Like I want to find mm-hmm. the Alan Moore, mm-hmm. Grant Morrison, Neil Gaiman's of manga and everything to like dive into um nausicaa that was another one i uh, uh my friend Comron got me that for my birthday and it was a box set so i was like oh this is perfect this is like the core kind of mangas that you kind of want to mm-hmm. roll with that first to really get into it but you're right like me and my friends uh we were you know we, i grew up on the batman anime yeah, series spider-man you know x-men and that's what we gravitated mm-hmm. towards and i guess grew up with that i guess because of our parents they were kind of into comics um but then everyone around us was like Dragon Ball Z and mm. Yu Yu Hakusho or whatever. You know what I mean? Like all that stuff. And I was like, I don't get it. Like, mm-hmm. Samurai Jack was like the closest I got <laughs> yeah, to anything. <laughs> Japanese stuff. Yeah. But uh, did you, you know, uh, when did the animation stuff start? Yeah. Because right, so you're, you're at comics and, you know, you're you know expanding your horizons there. And now you're doing full on cartoons. Yeah. Um, yeah. So before you mentioned the fashion institute and that's where i forgot my train of thought i went there because of basically like that's a state school like i got into pratt and i got into montclair state university which is a new jersey school and i was i was lazy and i only got like applied to three at the time so it was up to those three i got into all of them pratt was way too expensive and then montclair i didn't was like the same price as fit so i was like oh i can live in manhattan for the same price as living in new jersey so i was like all right so i went to fit which was like a very interesting experience. But at that school, I first took like animation classes and was like seeing other people animate. And I was like, hmm, am I being left in the dust a little bit? Do I got to pick it up? So I've only been animating, animating on my own for about like, I got an iPad in like March of last year or like no, May 
of last year. And that's when I started doing frame by frame. But in college, I was exposed to it and took a class and learned like after effects animation. But it's pretty new. It's pretty new to me. What what do you have like animators that you, you know, really gravitate towards? Oh, I like or, um and that's who you aspire. Yeah, probably Batman the animated series, like we already brought it up. And the X Men nineties show. Like I I uh I had older cousins and like some of that media again would kind of like drip down and I would like get hand me downs and stuff with like that merchandise and I would like that. So eventually I like bought the box set for Batman the animated series and I like uh also had uh looney tunes and i like chuck jones i like chuck jones's style a lot and you can kind of see that in how i draw it does kind of look like chuck jones uh i like the gorillas like uh jamie hewlett he's a good illustrator yeah um yeah uh i do have influences but i try and like uh grab it like pick it up and then kind of move on i like jack kirby obviously like the thick line work and stuff like that I like uh, the guy that did the long Halloween. His name's slipping my mind. Um, then the right. Oh, Tim Sale. Tim Sale. Tim yeah. Sale. I like um, Darwin Cook or something like that that did the the long oh, front yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, dude, that's like top tier artist. Yeah, you. I like when people make the superheroes make like look kind of cartoony like that. That's kind of my thing. I like mm-hmm. the cartoons a lot for sure. Oh, um, cool. When it comes to like, so I, I watched your Uncanny Hero stuff on YouTube, mm-hmm. um, and I might be wrong, but it gives off more like uh, kind of like a how do I, should I say? I want to say like motion comic kind of vibes, mainly because you get the word bubbles. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's one of those things where like, when it comes to creating something, and say you're drawing a comic versus animating something on youtube how does your process differ are you i know the animation takes more time obviously because there's editing involved and you have to make things move. Mm-hmm. so i'm just curious how that shapes your creative process and how you kind of approach it because with, with comics it's like a stagnant image right but then to me at least maybe again maybe i'm wrong but the youtube videos almost seem like they are a combination of those yeah two. um so before I answer the question, that style kind of came from necessity because like I've only been animating for like six or seven months. So it's like I really I thought about it logistically because after I did this book series, the, the big one, I like uh, was really weighed down because it took me years. So I realized that I had to keep logistics in mind. So I like couldn't cast a voice cast yet or stuff like that. So the motion comic was just like out of necessity because it like cuts the workload pretty pretty drastically where i just like i like bought type beats you know what i mean and just like threw those on instead of like using sound effects and stuff like that and it kind of like i feel like it still immerses you but it it saves me like a lot of pain in these in these early years (laughs) and um there's a lot of money yeah yeah definitely and um how I approach it differently is I just kind of, uh, I'm a one man team kind of, so I don't have to necessarily explain anything. <laughs> so I just kind of will storyboard it out and then I just kind of will do it as I go kind of. Um, I think I like to have as much story done as possible before I approach um, any kind of drawing. So with Uncanny Heroism, I really have like big plot points for like 10 episodes. It'll probably be like a 10 episode arc or so. Um, And within that, I have like storyboards and stuff for like um, individual kind of uh, uh, like individual issues and stuff. And then I can like go in them and make more detail. One sec, I'll like show you. Oh, nice. Hell yeah. Yeah, so this big, massive book, you can see Uncanny Heroism, is like by Hebrews. And I got like character designs in here and all kinds of stuff. Cool. Nice. Yeah, so I like made these little like stapled together storyboard booklets for myself. Like you can see the 
would help us start to come by. This is one that's already out. And like some of it, um, some of it you can even recognize, like this is him looking through the window and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I kind of plan it all out on the paper. And, but as I go, I definitely am inspired. Like I'll have like random ideas and be like, and see how like, um, when I have it all in the software, I'll be like, oh, if I just did this and this, I can like make a whole new scene and like spin it like that and kind of, and like sometimes like the Bob Ross happy little accidents kind of come together and like fill out pieces too. And I like to leave room for that like uh, spur of the moment creativity because I am kind of like as a solo team, you kind of can uh, benefit off that. Yeah, you, you have complete control. Damn, so that's a process. It's like, in depth. Are... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, what's what's funny is as you're creating your story bro- story yeah, I can't talk. Storyboard mm-hmm. for your animations, you're kind of thumbnailing your comic already. Yeah, right? kind of. So uh, in a way knocking out two birds mm-hmm. on stone. So, you know, and you made comics on t- you know, and the, the comics differ from your animations that are that are yeah. out and those are self published. Yeah, they're self published. Um I did I wanted to uncanny heroism I wanted to do before these books, but I think I realized that like I wanted uncanny heroism to like be special. So I wanted to do something else first. So I made like a ridiculous five year book epic <laughs> that took way too much time. Um but I guess we'll, I'll kind of explain it a little bit. I got them right here. So this is the first one, Rupert and the Goat. And I made, I started this one when I was in, a, in college at the Fashion Institute in my freshman years. This was 2016. And the storyline a little bit kind of does deal with like being in Midtown in Manhattan when I kind of grew up in like Bumblefuck, New Jersey. <laughs> and like the contrast and stuff like that. And like, it's just like, a lot of crazy fantasy art. Oh wow, man! A lot of lizard people. <laughs> the squid. This is one of my favorite pages right here, with like the the sword and like the squid's arms being cut off. And you did the coloring, yeah. The writing, yeah. The... This one probably took longer than all the others. This one probably took like three years. I put this one out. Let me look at the back. Okay. Twenty nineteen, yeah. And I started in twenty sixteen. So this was like kind of problematic. But one of the problems was is that I also like got in the world building trap and I like expanded it too much. <laughs> nice. Dude, no, that's that's admirable for you know, someone at your stature <clears throat> at this point, like someone like at you know this point of your age and career th- that's really cool and crazy stuff that you have going on so how long are these graphics so they're each 100 pages so the, okay. you can look at the three of them together and they make like a good little set um nice yeah so i put out this one in 2019 this one in 2020 and this one only came out like a few weeks ago this is the only copy that exists and like to be honest oh, like i kind of fucked up a little bit and didn't you know, focus on marketing enough like you probably realize as creators too that like like you can't just make stuff you have to like market and like get it oh, in yeah, front of you sell yourself. yeah so as like i'm on, like being young like i haven't really like done that yet like i graduated in 2020 during the pandemic and i've just been kind of like trying to finish these books popping things together and stuff like that since yeah <laughs> It's been a while. We we're on the same kind of timeline. Yeah. Right? Um, I graduated 2020 in February. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So did no, I. no, 2021. Never mind. You graduated right before me then. Yeah. So I was like mid pandemic and everything. Yeah. It was an awkward time. Yeah. yeah. Just like a t- yeah. I graduated in ju- June of 2020. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Word. Mm-hmm. Totally there with you. It was a weird time. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah, trying to figure out what to, what steps to take at that point, and you know, with your career, and just like what what can what's yeah. available at the moment for me to yeah, like to jump it, into. There's like no comic cons to go. Yeah, to. you're just kind of like, well. So are these print by demand? Yeah. Or how so do you these were these? print on demand. Um, I'm considering making these like limited edition in time, and kind of like cutting the print on demand because I don't really love that 
kind of whole concept and I don't really love Amazon like that but like um it was more so like I was a broke college student and it was like oh like book printing for a hundred page books is expensive <laughs> I didn't even realize yeah, that full color <laughs> Yeah, um, with the what the, what you have going on with them too. I like your color coding for them you, yeah. too. Like they all they look yeah, uniformed cool. as well. Yeah. Uh, just curious, how much are they like? How much do they averagely like charge to print a book? Um, it's weird pricing. Like it's hard to say because like uh, I I set the price at these for twenty, but then like I saw they like mark may have marked it lower, but I still might be big. For like a prime price but maybe i'll be making the same percent kind of thing i don't know amazon seems really fishy um the the benefit i would say for this is that you can order like one copy at a time and it will show up kind of thing. so That's and cool. also like it's on amazon like people can find it so it's like um it's not all bad because it is just like you can upload one of these and they'll give you like um the, it's it's like having um it's like having a, a a record label kind of thing or like a publisher the the split like if you think about it like that like it's like it's average those kind of prices so it's nothing like it's not like out of pocket of them but it is like in terms of it being a creator owned book it's like i would definitely reap more benefits just self publishing but at the same time you can order artist mm-hmm. copies that are like uh like 8 dollars a copy I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. That's super so cool. you can order like 10, 10, you know, artist copies for people. So, so you oh, can right. also kind of like still like work around it a little bit and do like make your own sales that way. Kind of like if you only had like an audience of like 50 people, that would be a good way to do it because like printing a book like this for just 50 people is a little like good. Unless you did a Kickstarter, yeah. there's other options. But I think at the time I was just like, I have a hundred page book. How do I like? What do I do? And the Kindle thing just kind of like was was an easy solution at the time. Yeah, I think um, when you put a book on Amazon, you could put it as low as like ninety nine cents because you have to put a price on it. And apparently the process isn't too bad, if I'm correct, or at least from what it's I'm not told. terrible to put up a book. No, nah, it's like. It'll take an hour or two, but like nothing like crazy. And it's kind of all automated. Yeah, right? yeah. You just got to upload JPEGs like other print services kind of. Oh, okay. Okay. So is this available digitally as well? Um, or is it just like I don't print? have any digital copies available yet. I, to be honest, I'm not very good at like distributing <laughs> or any of that kind of thing yet. I'm kind of new to being like a business and that's kind of like the phase I'm at as an artist as I, I understand at my level, I have to be more of a businessman than an, than an artist too. So I have to kind of get better at these things, but like for the moment, I'm pretty uh, all over the place when it comes to like getting copies to people and stuff like that, but I'm not sweating it. I feel like everything like that's kind of a process. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's a learning yeah. process. I mean, it, it's hard to finish a book, mm-hmm. but and especially like if you go to school or study or practice on your free time, whatever, whatever you may do, like it's hard to create a book, mm-hmm. like plain and simple, and especially comic books. If you're writing and drawing and coloring and like laying it out panel wise, it's a lot of work. And then you have to step into the shoes of a business person yeah. and market yourself and sell yourself and your book Mm -hmm. because it's not just your book now it's you you're like a like almost like this like entity that needs to be marketable Mm -hmm. yeah so people you know because people may like your book or they see you and go oh this person's cool let me check out what they've created Mm -hmm. you know uh i am curious though you said you started that first book in 2016 yeah and it didn't print until 2019 yeah so did you ever hit a moment where you're like, man, this sucks. I give up. Or I, was it one of those things where you're just like, you know what? I'll make it when I make it. Um, It did kind of suck. But I think that I had so much of it that I I, I was like in too deep. <laughs> like I I felt like I couldn't go back kind of thing. What What felt crazier was finishing the first one and going to the second one almost. But the thing about the second one, too, is the second one is like short stories. 
So it's different than the first. And I already had some of the short stories in the pages. So how the second one came about, it came about a lot easier too, where um, I kind of like uh, used my college classes to make this book. <laughs> so I, uh, nice. I, yeah. I, like there's a, there's a part of this book, let me uh, find it, where it's all like, it's actually more like of a novel, like you see the text in there and stuff like that. And in my English class at the time, I wrote the novel. And then in my illustration classes, I was making these and stuff like that. I was being a little uh, <laughs> all over the place. And then like this one, that's a little more hand-drawn. I made in a, a bookmaking class at the time and so on and so forth. I think this one was one of the few ones that I, uh, with the animals, was one of the few ones that I sat down and made on my own accord. And then there's like one with like a black and white wow. character, like a Mickey Mouse kind of. And then um, the reasoning for all of this, there's one with a band too. There's five short stories. In the book. And then the reasoning for all of this is that like book three is the one I kind of like wanted for it to wrap, come to all together kind of thing. And it's like very like psychedelic, crazy. Like it's like all the worlds clashing, coming together kind of thing. Like you can see like all the characters and stuff. Those are all the books. Oh man, your author yeah. photo. That's yeah, great. yeah. Author photos. Yeah, so there's a lot of like Dude, really crazy it. stuff in this one. So it, it was like a very crazy series and I'm kind of hoping it reaches the light of day someday kind of thing. Like I was very excited to make it because I figured that like if I can make it at this age, I could always later in life kind of like put it out but i liked that i was like night like young and creatively like ignorant kind of and i wanted to make something at that time i felt like yeah hell yeah, yeah. dude like oh. it, there's so much admiration for how much you've done in this short period <clears throat> and what you put out you know just as and the variety like holy crap that's it's admirable for sure like by all means dude like take pride thank in you yourself. yeah yeah and to do it yourself you know like to not only do it yourself, but to follow through and continue it. Word, thank you. You know, yeah, yeah. The one advice I was given by a random writer was that like your first book is really hard to create. Like it's gonna be a difficult process, but then your second book is even more difficult because then people are gonna be like, okay, you wrote the first book, where's the second? Yeah, book? yeah. And now you have a timeline. Yeah. Versus the first book, you had all the time in the world. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. It's a good skill to build though yeah. in time. It's it's hard to develop, but it, it's good. So do you study a lot of like I don't know, like story structure? How do you how do you come about your stories and your writing process? So my writing process is very visual based, I guess. Um I'll always like I'll listen to music kind of. I'm very inspired by music. I don't know why, but I guess I, I just like bands and I like music. And I part of this is like why I got into comics and art was like, uh, I wanted something similar to albums because I drew and I wanted to tell stories and have pieces. To that. Um, my bad, I forgot the initial question. Could you rephrase it? <laughs> I went on a tangent. What? what did I just ask? Um, I got like super into like the album. Yeah, uh, my writing yeah. process. Oh, your yeah. writing process. So my <laughs> writing process is very visual. So I'll like, sometimes like, You'll probably have this happen as a writer too. You'll like listen to music and then like in your head, you'll think to yourself like, oh, I could see like a shootout happening with this or like a, a very cinematic thing like that. And I think that because um, I write vi being like visual storytelling and writing are very one and the same for me because I like, I don't have to like provide it to an illustrator. Like uh, another illustrator is not gonna do my scripts. Like I'm just doing these because of like, I didn't have another writer. So um, for me, it's more so like, I kind of do like a mishmash of like the Marvel method by myself kind of thing. <laughs> if you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a one man Marvel. Yeah, yeah. But like, I'll do the visuals because it's in my head like that, but then I'll fill in the speech bubbles after the fact and like, or like, like the dialogue kind of comes about naturally. Like the character, if a character opens the door, like I, I already kind of will know the one liner that they'll say because it will feel like in that moment, this is what they'll say. That's almost my writing process. It's just like immediate off the dome, pop, pop, pop. And I um, 
to do as much as I do, I try and not get hooked up on perfection too much. And I try and just like build the muscle of getting good. Like that was kind of like these three books was like, I wanted to build the muscle of getting good. So I could do uncanny heroism kind of how I saw, like I wanted it to do. That's mm-hmm. great. That's super cool. And that's cool being, you know, I've done that with stories where it's just like, I have a vision for something, but I'm not quite yeah. there yet. Like I need to like, just like learn a couple things to really get that down. And yeah, it's like what you're saying. It just comes with time and experience and practice and mm-hmm. practice. Uh, how many years have you been drawing? doing art? When, when did this oh, this is a, a I, I've been waiting to bring this in, but I actually wood carved before I did art. So oh, here crap. is a, a oh, wood yeah, carving ready. of the guy from the, the, the superhero episode. And it's like kind of like an action oh figure. That's yeah. sick. <laughs> that I had one of the dog cool. too, but that one sold. So I've been And you created a stand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a wooden canvas yeah. that I painted to try and make it look like action. There's another one too. This is for the the pumpkin guy from this comic book. Oh, cool. Uh, so can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah, too? the pumpkin stand. We could, yeah. Um, pumpkin stand was just kind of like at a certain point, I realized, like, oh, I'm going to finish, like, these books. And, like, I, I was just kind of, like, looking for new opportunity. And so Pumpkin Stand kind of came about in a time when I, like, wanted, like, I just started Karma Cartoons, my, like, personal car- comic book uh, company kind of thing. Um, and then I uh, wanted something to be kind of, like, a number one or, like, a so, like, you know, like a standalone character kind of thing where like these books, like you heard from like the story that I pitched, they're not very like easy to pick up and just like read real quick kind of thing. So Pumpkin Stand was like supposed to just be something digestible so people can really see like my comic ability. And the photograph kind of aspect of this book came out, came about because again, just kind of necessity, like it's a time saver. <laughs> like at the end of the day, like I was tired. <laughs> like I wanted. To... What are you taking pictures of? Leave me alone. I'm making a comic. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the backdrop I picked for this is uh, Blairstown, New Jersey, and this town is where they filmed like uh, Friday the Thirteenth, like the opening shots, like the original from the '70s and stuff like that. So for the Halloween like aesthetic, I was like, this is like a good town for this. Like it's like a 40 minute drive from me and some shit. That's dope. And that's cool how you're integrating two more, another form of art. So, did you take those photos? I did, yeah. Um, I, again, just kind of necessity. Like, I took a photo class in college and I kind of have that attitude where it's like, I'll just do it myself, I suppose, because I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It seems. You feel no, like I mean that's the best way to go about you know I I learned that later in life where you're just like well I guess I'm gonna have to figure yeah. this out <laughs> and then you're just like this needs to come well all right well gotta Google some stuff and uh, see how <laughs> I get started <laughs> and just do it you know it takes time and effort but dude that effort is paying off thank you for you right now oh yeah right? you got books printed left and right yeah um uh, do you think you'll take like you'll take upon that like photography method again. And do you feel it's one of those things where the story influences what you take pictures of, or is it vice versa, where the pictures influence the story? Hmm. The pictures definitely do influence the story. And I think I will do it again. I, 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 I've been talking to Mark of Lesser Known Comics, and I'll be doing a, a version of this where I'm not taking the photos, but it, uh, I would be interested in doing it again with taking the pictures too. I visited my sister in Chicago and I took photos, but I don't remember like with the intent of following this up. This was like, I made this one in October and like the week this came out, I went and took photos for that one. But I I got like a part-time job in the winter to like help my, you know, (laughs) art's not free all the time, or art art costs money sometimes. So I had to like do that. So it fell by the sidelines a little bit, but I think I would be interested in doing it again because it seems like, it's just a new way to kind of like tell stories and like you can uh you draw influence from like those backgrounds that you wouldn't get and sometimes as a creator it's like I can't like really recreate 
some of the beauty of like this like dilapidated house in a drawing like I can recreate it but it's going to be like my version so it, it, it is kind of fun to make a maj paj kind of thing like this in it it has its point yeah that's so sick that's um there's an issue of Promethea by Alan mm-hmm. Moore and uh Jay Williams that does that where they they had people dress up and everything and I think it's all photo based um with maybe some illustration I don't even know if they did that mm-hmm. over it but I like how it reminds me of that uh, Ralph Baschke movie, Cool World, where like real life yeah, yeah. with like an animated world and everything. Yeah, so stuff like that. I went to college with like... a girl named after the 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 protagonist in that movie. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Holly. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh my god, that's too cool. Yeah, Baschke's one of my favorites. He lives um just like at five oh, hours awesome. away from here in Santa Fe too. Yeah, I've always yeah. Him as back. a young animator, I think about him. I'm like, that was the guy at one point. Like, if you were at Disney, like he was like the R-rated, like the Adult Swim of the time, almost if you would. Yeah, and you know what that film style he had. I'm spacing the name of it. It starts with an M, but where like even for Lord of the Rings and everything, where he would get actor or a uh, fire and ice, he would get actors. Yeah, and they, yeah. They just put like a coloring over it. And it's, you know, live action, but mixed with animation at that point. Um, would you ever try doing stuff like that? I've thought about it. Yeah, it's action? definitely like, um, I'm, it's like interesting. Like, I, it's like new technology. So it's, do I keep learning kind of thing and keep growing this muscle kind of and keep building? Or do I kind of like cut it off a little bit and just be like, I'm doing wood carvings, animations, comic books, photo, <laughs> you know, like, so it, it's, it's kind of, um, I, I, I struggle with that a little bit. Like, do I go for it or do I like hold back a little bit? But who knows? <laughs> just kind of take it as yeah, it comes like, sort of thing. What, whatever gig. Pays yeah. Yeah. That's the one you get like, good at. Being like your own boss and like own creative team, you can't you can like make those decisions. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh that's cool. You have it's it's kinda kinda like how I mean, I've set myself up where I'm like, okay, I do short stories, I do prose, I do film, mm. I do comics and like then, you know, the podcast just mixes in with all that type of stuff. And, you know, as a former musician well not former, I still play music. But as that's not like that's my yeah, switch that it's I more of the you hobby. Know. It's yeah. like okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like, all right, if I need that, I could dabble in that a little bit to throw mm-hmm. that in there. And it's like, all right, whatever gig picks up first, that's the one I'm yeah, <laughs> definitely. putting more effort into. At that and, time. like, with music, I feel like um, like keeping lanes open is always important to me. Like, I, I also know people that do music in New Jersey and stuff like that. And I hang out with them and maintain relationships because it's, it's fun even sometimes, not even to be, like, for business reasons, but just for creativity's sake to know other people And to see like, oh, that's how this creative side, creative industry approaches creativity. And you get to like reapply it kind of with like a take to your own feet. Like I kind of like that with music and art. Yeah, it's um, there's some fun mashups you can make. Some, I mean, and it's cool because there's there's the people that do pull that type of stuff off. Uh, you know, just kind of starting from bare bones of what you do. You know, Jack Kirby, Frank Mm -hmm. Miller, Will Eisner, stuff like that. Those are like you know, really great people to look up to. But then when you start adding more mediums, Rob Bakshi, you know, Coheed and Cambria is a band, but they have their comic going on. Yeah. There, right. And all that type of stuff. It's just like, it, it just keeps growing mm-hmm. and growing. And it's like, who knows what's going to come out of it. And you're at that age where it's like, dude, do you just keep doing yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> Don't stop. Like it, it's going to get, it's going to do some cool stuff. In yeah. And I'm excited to like, uh, join like a crew, like the lesser known people too, though, because it, as you can imagine, like my story, it's very like, me, myself, and I, <laughs> and I like my uh, my immediate circle of people I'm around. They don't know the comic world or the creative world, so it's very uh, like a breath of fresh air for me to like uh, find this group because it's kind of like uh, you know everybody would love to work for like Image, but like again everybody would love to work for Image. That market's like saturated, <laughs> so it's like are you going to be able to like shoot in between that crack and? Also, to be able to do that, you also have to compromise. So it's great with lesser known comics is like Mark is knows I do all these other things and he's kind of cool with it, you know? Yeah, it's a it's a good way to get some Mm -hmm. stuff out. You know what I mean? And having that. 
I don't know. It's kind of more such a punk rock feel. And I guess that's why I dig it growing up as, you know, yeah. kid and everything. It's all DIY and it's all, we're just going to get up and do this, guys. We're going to, you know, meet whoever has a similar interest and we're going to create some stuff. Yeah. And, you know, th- that's, that's, you know, how it all came about with us and everything was just, you know, we wanted to talk shop and talk comics and, you know, spread some words. So everything worked out mm-hmm. really well. Um, so do, what, what do you have in production? Uh, right now that you can talk about at the moment can... hmm i'm a, on a little bit of a season hiatus from the cartoons i think uh, a little bit of time off would be good so i'm kind of doing more things with the lesser known people trying to do more like i've been doing like bob ross youtube videos and stuff like that so i'm just kind of like trying to get out there and do more marketing i think that's the next step for me personally it's now that i have this still in like disability I have to actually sell these books or else it's not like, you know, (laughs) going to happen like that. Yeah. So um, I'm positive and all that, but I think that's the next step more so than just making something else because that has always kind of been like my habit almost is to just make more and more. I think I have to apply myself where it's not going to happen. Yeah, letting it settle for a little bit is always yeah. good too. You know, you have a you have a lot of content out there to like get people interested, which is why you know right away I was just like, yeah, I want to yeah, work. Like, I'm just looking at this like little amount that I'm looking, you know, the videos mm-hmm. and then your comics. I'm like, yeah, this is this definitely has to happen. But let, letting everyone catch up to that so they could follow you on your next little path that's mm-hmm. going to come out. Um, and you know, social media is a bitch. Like, yeah, yeah. Like bitch I feel like out, these you know? days the algorithm like. Um, to make content online, the algorithm just goes for stuff that like picks up in the algorithm. Like if you look at the titles these days of like big videos, they're all like really clickbaity titles. But I almost feel like that's the secondary market is opening up too. When I see a creator these days with like 7,000 people in good engagement, I know like that's the real, like this person actually has like a base and they can probably sell like a thousand dollars of or a thousand units of something and like really get it going so it's like the numbers play tricks on you a little bit because like just because you have like a hundred thousand followers doesn't mean you can convert a hundred thousand units so if you have like a seven thousand yeah. base you could probably reach those seven thousand ten thousand people engage with them and be like a micro celebrity like in that term where it's like people know you and like really love your books, but like uh, it's more of a, to a base and to a market kind of thing. And that's kind of what I'm working towards. I suppose I feel like it makes sense. Yeah. It's not only breaking through uh, the real world, you know, once conventions and all that come open and, you know, getting a physical, you know, outreach out there, but now you're just like, I have to break through a digital wall. Yeah. I just, it's there it's available it's you know anyone can see it but you have to like cut through the crowd yeah. still and <laughs> get get everything noticed and it's it's difficult you know even with the show like if stuff dies down whenever we always see a drop and then as soon as we fire back up everything you know rises back to the top but it's it's kind of it's almost discouraging being like i know that my fan base is there but uh your algorithms not giving them to me yeah right yeah <laughs> It's hard as a creator, but I think it's not something to be down about because um, we see the analytics and we assume like if it's not up, it means it's bad. But like, you know, think about the content you consume. Like there's probably shows you love, but like if you're not feeling it, you might not watch it that night sort of thing. So it's like I feel like as a creator, we put this stress on ourselves, but like it doesn't have like it's more of in our head sort of thing. and. I think this has been a video idea, but I might make a healthy habits for artists video because I know a lot of like my peers from the fashion industry and stuff. Graduating during COVID was like rough. Like I was already doing the comics. So I was just like, well, I'll do more comics. (laughs) But I think um, for other people, they didn't have like, they were like hoping to get a job or more of a traditional career. And with COVID kind of fucking that up, it kind of hurt them. But I think doing healthy habits for artists might like help people stay positive because it's something that a lot of us get into it for the love, but then we realize it's a business and it kind of is like a, a push and pull feeling a little bit. But do you um do you feel like when it comes to looking at it, because it is a business at the end of the yeah. day, right? It, it's something that for a lot of people, as much as they want it to be like a passion project, it is something that becomes a source of income or additional income. Mm-hmm. 
And do you feel like now that you've published not like just one, but multiple projects and you know, you're dabbling into other things to kind of practice in it or relish in like animation and drawing at the same time. Do you feel like the business aspect of it all almost tarnished your image of being a creator and kind of living off of that? Or do you feel like it kind of, you know, if it didn't tarnish or maybe it did, do you feel like it kind of taught you something yeah. about life in general? It's definitely, it's like the Wizard of Oz. I think about it a lot. Like, you know, when they find out, like, the guys behind the curtain, it's like, oh, it is different. Um, and I think uh, it's not a bad thing, though, because I think that, like, as young creatives and creatives that are new to the industry, it's like, it's like the early phases of becoming, like, involved with the industry is realizing that it is a business and that it, you do just kind of have to maintain relationships and stuff like that. But I think um, you find you find the fun in it again. And I think that us being involved with lesser known and stuff like that, it's pretty awesome because we can make it about fun and like pitch random ideas and stuff like that. So there, you, you do got to do work for like, you know, money here and there and stuff. And it does suck. But I think that it's important to remember why you got into it. And I think that engaging with young creatives has always been helpful for me to see like how like enthusiastic and like hype they are. And you're like, damn, like, I don't want to break it to you, but like, I, I love to see it kind of, <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. But, um, Dude, I I wanna, it's nothing to be We're down about. Now. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's a grind. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's one of those yeah. things like, you got to remember, it's like, why do you have that eight hour day job? It's like, oh, yeah, so I could survive, so I could yeah. make art and all that. You know what I mean? Like, keep <laughs> I like that. Food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. It's just like, you know, I got to got to pay an artist somehow. I got to get supplies. I got to get comics. I got to get inspiration. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's it your day job. You know, and this bugs the hell out of me, you know, when people really let their day job, like, define them in that yeah. sense, where it's just like, no, like, you are. I think I saw Fight Club at the right time. <laughs> like you are not your khakis, you're not the car you drive. Yeah. You know, like it's just it's mm -hmm. it's what you make out of yourself, and you have a passion. Follow that yeah, passion definitely, and don't let shit crush it. You know, I saw this film, uh, in in and of itself, it's on Hulu. Uh, you might like it. Actually, mm. both might like it as creators. But uh, holy fuck, that movie was amazing, and it's really just about like, you know. You're a magnificent and amazing. There's one segment. It's like being how a magnificent, magical thing. But don't let other people that are blind like corrupt that. Yeah. You know, they're 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 blind to what you are, and they might you know just say that you're this basic thing. When it's like, oh, they're blind. They they can't really see what mm. you are. And you know, you got to flourish. You got to let that passion come out. Because if not, dude, you're gonna go fucking crazy. Yeah. And I was talking to my vet, actually, uh, my veterinarian this last week. And... Brandon's all, are you going to let your job define you? <laughs> yeah. Like, know, like, what do, speaking what of... do you do when you're not healing animals? Uh, <laughs> Dude, no. Uh, th this was, this was kind of like, a, he actually brought this to me. So he gave me a pep talk, mm. pet talk if anything, because um, my vet was saying, you know, he's really into photography, and he knows I do like creative stuff. And he's like, yeah, I do this and this. And I, I made sure to have, you know, photography at the end of all my crazy shifts and for sure every weekend I go out and take photos. Um, he's like, because the stress of the job and being a vet, like apparently I didn't know this and I Googled it and he was right. Um, but veterinarians have like one of the highest rates of suicide. Oh yeah. I could see that. And yeah. It's yeah. Depressing. yeah. Just depressing as hell. Yeah, like you're not like... only dealing with humans and their emotions, but animals and everything. Yeah. You know? Like it's just an insane thing. And he's like, yeah. that's why I always, make sure I go and take photos and keep up with editing because that's my passion. That's what makes me happy. And that's what takes me away from this. He's like, I love this. I mean, it's my day job, but like, that's, yeah. that's really what I love. And it's like, dude, you just, I mean, you just said it right there. Like you need this for your mm -hmm. sanity. Like you need to be creative and find your passion. Yeah. And I think you got to give yourself a uh, space as a creative too, to feel like comfortable with what you do and comfortable, like that you're not perfect and okay. Yet. Because like, think about like exercise. If you go to the gym, like you're not going to be the best on the first day. Like it's like a known <laughs> with like exercise, but like as artists, we assume like we're going to step up to the plate and be like amazing. <laughs> but <laughs> well, You're always told that there's competition, yeah. right? Like you're always told that 
you need to do something to basically uh, stand out compared mm-hmm. to others. And there's this expectation when you when you're creative or an artist to, to where if you don't do anything that stands out or do anything unique, you're just going to blend in with the rest. Mm. And so you hit the, you hit the ground running and try doing that immediately, you know? Yeah. But I think it's, you, you can't burn out. You got to keep, uh, uh, keep, keep that spirit alive. Cause it, I think the pressure of like, there's, there's tons of creatives that do just work like desk jobs. And I think that, mm-hmm. um, they probably also do have ambitions too. And then it becomes a similar thing as like the veterinarian where it's like, okay, I'm at a studio, but now how do I like get my passion off the ground kind of thing? And it's like, you can't really like, uh, well, if you put a lot of pressure on yourself, it's going to kind of be a negative. So I think you have to, uh, well, you know, just stay positive and find the time to work and like not burn yourself out, stay motivated, keep moving. It, it, like I try and b- keep healthy habits in mind as much as possible with art because like burning out is almost like worse than like not working like doing a ton of work in a day like if I feel myself like I can't really do all this work today I kind of let it be a little bit I know when to push and kind of when to let it be because like burning out for months is way worse than taking like a couple minute break kind of thing so yeah mm, that's interesting yeah. you're one of the first people Maybe I'm talking to, you know, the wrong people or getting the wrong <laughs> advice. But you're one of the first people to kind of like to to mention like it's okay to take a break. Yeah. And like if you're going too hard, you know, because when you're like making a book or whatever, again, it's one of those things. It's like you got to keep grinding, you know, like so what if you're doing eight hours? You're going to spend six hours yeah. doing whatever it is you do. And then, you know, you do that for like weeks on end and then you end up just like doing worse. Yeah. 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 No. And I mean, just equate that back to the gym. If you go super hard every single day, you don't take a rest day. You're just doing an hour and a half, just tearing stuff. Yeah. And you're, you're going to, the muscles aren't going to build up or anything like that. You're going to like, yeah. And you're going to be on your bed being like, I never work out again because that just destroyed me. Like, fuck that, you know, or if you're throwing up every time you work out because you go too hard. Jesus Christ. (laughs) (laughs) But throwing yeah, I mean, up for making books. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's when you yeah. know you're in. <laughs> I haven't slept for yeah. 82 hours, guys, but I'm 40 yeah, pages yeah. in. That's, that's, Comics, the, man. that's how they make mangas or animes in Japan, from what I hear. Dude, yeah, that's what yeah. I hear too. It's like a 60, 80 hour work. It's work like, oh my you're God. Just like pumping out 14 like the, pages yeah. a day. Yeah, it's like nonstop. Yeah, it's crazy. But, uh, I wish I had that discipline. But, you know, you hear a lot of writers and creators being like, you have to do it every single day, every single day. And I think a big thing that when you listen to, and, you know, of course, I love Neil Gaiman and I love all like these like big Mm. creators that I, you know, have created everything we love with comics. But uh, you look at the times they grew up and the times, I'm not trying to give us a Yeah, yeah. This isn't some millennial bullshit, Gen Z shit. But like, we have so many more distractions yeah. around us these days and we have so many more things going on. And like you literally like the, uh, not only the price of stuff and like, I, we have to have a full-time job just to have a decent mm-hmm. apartment to like put your yeah. crap, you know, it can't be a part-time job and all that type of stuff. Like you're, you're grinding and social media is like, if you're not on there, you can't promote your stuff. You're not just like going to shops and handing out flyers yeah. anymore, or trying to get on a radio show. Like you have to be, if we have to break that wall we were just mm-hmm. talking about. And so, I mean, that in itself fries me out. Whenever I'm scrolling and I'm trying to find stuff to share or, you know, editing my stuff, it's, it, you, you scroll too long and your brain is just like, um, yeah. why, why does it feel like it's been two hours? It's been 15 minutes, you know? So absorption, I think, yeah. is a big difference. Yeah. Just like, you know, we're a bit more exhausted mentally in that sense. And I don't know if our brains are meant to capture this much information and I think they're wearing it's wearing us out faster because mm-hmm. of that because we're just we shouldn't be you know that's why it fucking sucks. It's also not just the amount of information; it's the like type of information. Yeah, like, just content. You know? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. how many times can you go seeing like I don't know some random like shoe ad on your Instagram yeah. before you're just like okay, goddamn it, I'll buy the fucking mm-hmm. shoe. Like, <laughs> like 
it's not only you're getting an influx of like different information, but like the amount of information at one time. Yeah, definitely. I personally keep Instagram on my iPad, so I just like look at it less in general. Oh, mm-hmm. nice. That's smart. That's super smart. Because I no, definitely I have a problem with that. <laughs> Even on my iPad, I'm sitting there like a six year old. Like, <laughs> but then I'm like, I'll catch myself and I'll be like, I don't, I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> with a. Uh... You know, with like distractions in mind and also considering that, yes, you are younger than us. And so you were born into a, a world where there's even more mm-hmm. distractions available. So like by the time you're a teenager, you know, like everyone has a smartphone Yeah. where I don't know if Brandon could attest to this. When I when I was 13, cell phones were like still kind of like right. a, a thing. Not everybody yeah. had. like I got a flip phone and I thought I was like, oh, shit. I yeah, made- yeah. I got yeah. a Motorola that like flips guys Playing and you snake. can make your own ringtone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like snake in like math class and shit. Like this has but, a calculator. Like, like, the slide phone's coming into. <laughs> yeah. Oh dude, those are great. So, okay. Like, there's something set. I had a razor. The envy. Like, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. My yeah. generation did. I had a something. For a minute. <laughs> yeah. There's something so satisfying when you hang up on someone and you just get that. Yeah. Clamp down. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's not the oh, same on like, those like, smartphones. Yeah. <laughs> No, you, you can't. You can only aggressively tap so many times. Where, yeah, you know, like click, you get instant but, satisfication. Um, you just toss it, and then you're just like, <laughs> Fuck, do I have Apple Care? Like, I just toss <laughs> the hell out of my phone. <laughs> like, um, oh, those things are so durable too. Yeah. Um, but with the world of distractions, like coming back to like your creative process, like talking about like all these like influxes of information and just like being sh- smitten with like ads and random other people just like advertising themselves when it comes to creating your own stuff how do you feel is like a daily goal for you a daily goal like, for me for instance when it comes to writing comic book scripts i know brandon probably has a different approach too of course but for me a daily goal it doesn't matter if i slept three hours it doesn't matter if i worked or not i'm like i'm gonna write one page of comic script minimum. It doesn't matter if it's a splash page. It doesn't matter if it's like a dialogue heavy page for me. If I can knock out one page a day that guarantees me, I'm going to have a 22 page comic. In yeah. Days. Word. I think, um, so what's your daily approach? Basically. I, I like to try and definitely do at least one art thing a day. So like today I didn't necessarily draw, but I was like applying to some jobs and like, we're doing like a two hour podcast at this point, probably like, uh, but nonetheless, like, so I do try and like sit down and make time for it every day, but I, I don't, I don't know. I I think I have like massive moments of like illustrating. And I think that when I draw, I get that zone focus. Like I'll sit down and just like zone out into it and do like an eight hour shift like that kind of, but then I'll like skip a meal and not eat and stuff like that. So that's why I intentionally <laughs> allow myself like so much like breaks because I or, like I, I do get the work done, but I almost like neglect other things for the work. <laughs> so I have to interject a regular time back into it. too. <laughs> that makes sense. I, I, I'm kind of a bridge between both mm-hmm. of them. You know what I mean? Like I, uh, the way I do it is just I'm always playing the scenario in my head and I'm kind of like drafting in my head all the time. And it's just like, I'm fil- it's like a film. Like I just play that scene over and over until I know exactly what it is I'm going to say. And then I just put it on the page and I'm like, that's mm-hmm. not, like that. And it's not, I'm not trying to say I'm great at first drafts or any of that type of crap. Either, <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. I mean? But it's the- just like, it's one of those things I have it out so well. And I have it just, I understand it so well that I'm just like, now I could pump it out. And then I'll do maybe not eight hours. Uh, I wish I could still do that. Yeah. But like, I'd, uh, you know, I'm I younger and at my parents' but, um, house. It's a different kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Days, man. Uh, but it's like, then I'm just like, all right, I got five pages done. And then, or like, I got 10 pages done, you know, like mm-hmm. it kind of, it's surprising. Mm-hmm. But uh, I bet the time, the timeline is probably very similar no matter what, you know, if, if you're, if I'm spending two days and I'm always like listening to podcasts and writing stuff and, you know, I'm, I'm always studying the craft itself. Like, yeah. You know, when I'm relaxing, I suck. People hate hanging out with me because I, I don't relax. I'm just like, all right, well, I'm studying this. I got to yeah. watch this. Creatives are definitely sponges. Thing. We soak it all up. 
Yeah. Yeah, in some form, like, my thing is, I love video essays. Oh, I swear word, to God, yeah. My YouTube feed is, like, it's, like, here's a three-hour video as to why, uh, I don't know, why I played uh, Team Fortress 2 ten years later and why I think it's still amazing. And I'm, like, yes, let me watch all this right now, you know? And it's because, like, it breaks down everything and explains it all, you know? And, like, you're always learning. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it's uh very much people forget like you know people and especially you know in in this day and age you know our diets I I you know what we're eating and all all this stuff and that's very important you know that's that's part of your health but you also got to realize people need to realize that what you consume media wise that's yeah yeah definitely too. that 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 plays a huge part like your your consumption is such a, an essential diet that you know I, that's why I can't watch. You know, I, I, I'm not a fan of dark shows like Euphoria and stuff like that. Like, I'm sure it's good. I'm sure it's all there. But people just try to make things to be dark. Yeah. And edgy, dark. yeah. People. Yeah. And it's just yeah. like, no, I, I want like quality over, you know, quantity at that mm -hmm. point. Like, I, I'd much rather watch an episode of MASH than like some whatever's trending right now, because it's like, I know I'm going to get a good, solid story. Like, I know what i'm studying yeah. and i want to learn from it you know mm -hmm. um kind of that alan moore i mean alan moore is extreme but he's just like if a book isn't challenging me when i read it like is it worth it and i'm like i mean that's a good <laughs> point you know like by all means but uh fuck, sometimes i just want to read something easy you know but uh right. <laughs> fucking... what does that say about me i'm just like always reading daredevil and <laughs> playing doom eternal <laughs> like <constantly. laughs> and listening to heavy yeah. metal like <laughs> and depressing punk songs all day well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that, that reflects into, like, what you're spinning out creatively, too, I'm sure, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I do wacky violence in my stuff, mm -hmm. so, you know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but just to, like, to wrap some stuff up, um, kind of some random questions we ask every, every person. Uh, one of them is just, like, if you had to take on a mainstream book, you know, Marvel, Ooh. DC, what, what's the one I that think you I know. would be like, I want to take a hack at that? Would... What's your dream? I, I always like to say, what's your dream character project? I would like to do Green Arrow. Green Arrow, oh, Green nice. Arrow would be fun because it's, like, mainstream enough of DC that you can, like, probably get a good base of, like, it, you're not, like, so left field like if i did like plastic man i'm pretty left field like it's like guardians of the galaxy like it's like you know it's mm -hmm. it's pretty obscure where like green arrow at least it's like he's in the justice like sometimes like he really he's like the sometimes why like he's like in he's in the cut too sometimes so it's like and he's goofy so i could kind of do like a cartoon green arrow and like mm -hmm. play that up and then like i can imagine like goofy like my cartoon kind of versions of batman and superman like making cameos and stuff like that and i think tone wise uh green arrow would work for like cartoon content yeah just make sure you too. just make sure you get Stephen amell to like approve it yeah, yeah, if you ever do it just, uh, <laughs> just be like you're famous and you're yeah. the bro. you endorse this book yeah definitely <laughs> I, I think Kevin Smith did some Green Arrow books. I haven't even really read that much Green Arrow, like, comics. But I like him as a character There's, a lot. <laughs> oh, I, I have a good recommendation for you. There's a Green... Oh, my God. I'm going to say this now because other people should read this book. Um, that's what this podcast is for, is to help you understand comics. Mm -hmm. right? um, I'll write it down right now. It's the... Uh, oh, God damn it. I just... I have it, too. Oh, it, duh. Green Arrow Year okay. One by um, Andy Diggle, and that was that New Fifty Two stuff, right? Or no, it's before New Fifty Two, I believe. Oh, it's Green Arrow Year One by Andy Diggle, and for anybody who doesn't know who Andy Diggle is, he's famous for the Vertigo series, The Losers, which was a comic book movie that had Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Zoe Zaldana, and Chris Evans, <laughs> and That's actually right. uh, Idris Elba as well. It was a lot of people that ended up doing comic book movies after. <laughs> um. But he wrote that uh, comic that was that movie was based off based off of, and Jacques did the art for this okay. Green Arrow book. It's before oh, okay. Jacques had like a big following major yeah. league status. Yeah, so it's a really good book about his time on the island, and it's like it's a solid story, and it's got Jacques mm -hmm. artwork. So if you like Green Arrow, definitely Where read it. Where hell yeah! And and also read the the Green Arrow book that was drawn by Amanda Connor. Word. Yeah, sorry. It's just the moment you said Green Arrow, I was like, "Oh, I got some recommendations oh, yeah. for you." Nice. 
That's a I've I've heard of that because I remember the artwork on this one too. Yeah, um, it's a dope book. Dope. I've really only wanted to read the Kevin Smith one, but I'm just a Kevin Smith fan. Yeah. So, but this this should be on that list. That and I guess I guess like Longbow Hunters, and that's like the iconic one. I have that. I don't know why I haven't read it. I need to get on that shit. I'm see. You need to get me to read some yeah, okay. stuff. Uh, uh, the other one <laughs> is a uh, Green Arrow, Black Canary, the wedding album by Judd Winnick and Amanda mm. Connor. Or no, sorry, Cliff Chang did the art. Amanda Connor did the covers. Yeah, that's cool. Those are my two Green Arrow records. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I just got excited <laughs> when you said Green Arrow because that's one of my favorite characters. He's a good one, yeah. And I feel like um, yeah. he could use some proper content. Arrow, the show was good, but it's like a different kind of Green Arrow. So it would yeah, be cool to see like a proper right. Green Arrow. Yeah. I mean, you want good Green Arrow. You got it right there. Oh, yeah. I and mean, you could also create the next. <laughs> yeah, that, that. There's that too. <laughs> nice. Oh, there's well, also Jeff Lemire Green Arrow. Sorry, just couldn't forget that. <laughs> gotta get that. In I there. never knew so much about Green Arrow until right now. Bro. Yeah, dude, I, <laughs> I, like, I, I got I've a been history, like a so secret cool. Green Arrow fan this whole time, and all those books, I've read them all. I've read all three of those. They're all I amazing. Saw he, and it's Andrea and Sir. I saw he has like a book with like uh, Green Lantern too. Like apparently at one point there was like a Green Arrow, Green yeah. Lantern book, like just green, the, <laughs> the green one. guys. Yeah, it's the Denny yeah. O'Neill, Neil Adams mm. run. Uh, the Something heroes, the one where they go cross country. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 an iconic one, and it's New Adam. Boom, that, Green Arrow recommendations hard. all day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, holy shit! I've I've never met anyone who's known someone. Like <laughs> Wait, I, really? I thought you would have known that. I thought I told you that. No, <laughs> I did not know you were like a huge. I'm just gonna picture you with the green little yeah. on all the time, dude. Now. I'll, I'll uh, <laughs> if you remind me, I'll take some pictures, share them on Instagram to show like what they look like. Oh yeah, yes, please. What's funny is I don't know if you're serious or not. Oh, um, I'm about to find out. All right? <laughs> oh man, so whew, yeah, dude, that's a lot to take in. Uh, you do a lot, and yep. um, man, I just I'm proud Thank of you. you. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> the way you said it, I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, uh, dude, keep it up. I'm really excited to see what happens with Lesson Word, yeah. and the content you have coming out with them um for all your future projects uh i'll link up your you know below everyone can find the oh wait do you have merch too i right? do like, is yeah i do have store, like paintings or... available and stuff like that i'll show you the paintings they're pretty nice so like these are based off the superhero mm. show mm. yeah so these are available online um That's yeah, cool. this is kind of how I'm funding That's Uncanny great. Heroism a little bit. I it's here that. and there. I'm funding stuff. This one was kind of like very obvious nod to uh, Batman the an- uh, animated series. Animated series. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that one shot in the intro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could see it. Hell yeah. Yeah, so um, I got stuff on dude, Christian that, that, Jones. That was one it. of my favorite. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, that, all the links are at yeah. the bottom. Um, We'll have a link to your YouTube, to your Instagram. Um, and then, of course, check out the links for Coffee to Comic and Lesser Known for those two discount codes. Uh, Christian, dude, this Hell has yeah. been a pleasure. It's been a joy. You're the first interview of the year. Word. It's awesome. Great, great kick it off. Um, and you're the first of the Lesser Known bunch. Yeah, more to come. Hell yeah. People on. Yeah. Yes. So, oh, Brandon, anything you say? I'm just going to say thank you for being the first artist to acknowledge you could take a break. And it's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Changing yeah. the game. But yeah, no, man. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we can sit down no, dude seriously uh thanks for being on the yeah, show no problem. and you know thanks for spending the time here and kind of like being the first breakout for like this episodic series of you know the lesser known mm-hmm. hell yeah yes well guys it's been a good night you know thanks for hanging yeah. for having me peace